play in some background music from Mark because Magdalena is on her way. She had car trouble. So we'll start the service in just, just a few minutes late and enjoy Mark's playing. <laughs> <laughs> the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to New Hope Presbyterian Church. 
whether you're here with us in person or watching our live stream, I'm glad you are spending the Lord's Day with us. I am Pastor Colleen Cook. Our liturgist this month is Linda Whitehead, and our organist is Magdalena Benazem, and we're so glad she, she got a ride. And uh, I'd like to read you New Hope's statement of welcome and inclusion. Welcome. Recognizing the great diversity in which God created humankind, we welcome you as God's own in body and soul, young, old, or somewhere in between. You may live alone, as a couple, or within a family. You may identify with different racial and ethnic groups. You may come with your own sexual identity and gender expressions. You may have unique physical or mental abilities, and you may be firm in your faith or seeking your path. You are welcome here. I have one announcement I'll say, and then I'll turn it over to Linda. Next week after worship, there will be a brief congregational meeting to elect a new class of elders. Our officer nominating committee has prepared a slate to elect, but our polity also allows for nominations from the floor. Please ask the person you want to nominate if they are willing to serve before nominating them. And Linda has some more announcements. Good morning. Good morning. I was expecting rain this morning, but mm, that's okay. Uh, rally day. I think that was good this morning, even though I was running a little late. But rally day, marking the beginning of our fall programming, was today. Intergenerational Sunday School will meet for its first lesson next Sunday. That's the intergenerational part. All ages are included. We'll get to know each other better and grow in our love for God. Subsequently, it will meet alternate Sundays. Confirmation class for seventh through ninth grade will meet on the other Sundays. Uh, you may ask Colleen or Rebecca to email you a schedule. New Hope will be participating in another Pride event on September 17. This one is sponsored by Chattahoochee Valley Pride and will be held at unique events on Norris Road. The festival starts at 12, and we will probably stay until around 5. We need volunteers to sign up to staff the booth. Uh, get in touch with Pam Moy if you can help. This is a wonderful opportunity to minister in our community. Then Tuesday, September 20, from 7 to 8.15 p.m., the online book club will be reading inspired by Rachel Hell Evans. If you would like to join this online group, contact Colleen so she can send you an invitation to the meeting. Now, let us please rise in body or spirit as God calls us to worship. Let us bow before our Creator, whose spirit moves over desert and sea, whose word has the power to create, to judge, and to save. Come, let us worship God. If you'll remain standing and him, sing hymn number 804, Rejoice, we pure in heart. 804.
we come to a time of confession when we tell the truth about our lives and our lives together as we always both personally and communally are involved in sin please uh, uh, sisters and brothers there is joy in the presence of the angels of God every time we turn toward our home and remember whose we are with open hearts let us pray We'll read the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin and then have time for silent prayer. Creator of the universe, we imagine that we are in familiar territory, that we know what to expect of this hour, that we will leave much the way that we came. Do not abandon us to our foolishness. In judgment, illumine our darkness. In mercy, bear us home until we recognize your presence wherever evil is confronted, truth is spoken, and life is restored. Amen. steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. In the name of the Lord, who is our portion and our hope, I declare that our sin is forgiven. May our mouths be filled with praise. Amen. Such forgiveness reconciles us to God. Let us also be reconciled to one another through the passing of the peace. We'll stay in our places and wave to each other and then rise for the Gloria Patri. Beloved ones, the peace of Christ be with you. Please join me in a prayer for illumination. Mighty God, you spoke the world into being. Speak now to our hearts. By the power of your spirit, make these ancient words live, that we might be shaped into your people, eager to bear your claim in the world and to give flesh to your future. For we pray in the name of Jesus, who leads us into life. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. The NIV Bible I read has the title for this chapter, The Lord's Grace to Paul, Paul being the Apostle. These are his words. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had 
acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But for, but for that very reason, I received mercy so that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ask the children to come forward if they would like, children and youth. <laughs> you don't count as a child. Okay, that's why I said and youth. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Have you ever lost something very precious to you? What have you lost, Jackson? You lost a, a person, your grandma. Yeah, when your grandma on your mom's side died. Uh huh. I can remember it, and I really don't like that time. Mm hmm. Pringles container rolled, fell off my hand and rolled somewhere where I couldn't get it. Mm. <laughs> the Pringles can rolled where you couldn't get yeah, it. And Vincent had clothes by that time. We ah. couldn't get it either. Bummer. Bummer. How about you, Manny? Can you think of a time you lost something? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Sammy, I guess you weren't able to find it again, and your grandma, as we know, is, is with Jesus now. So she's still with you in a way, but she's, she's not able to be with you in person right now. But my, per mm -hmm. my Pringle container is not. Your Pringle container? No. Mm -mm. It's gone for good, huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, Jesus says when people get lost because they don't do what they should, and they go away from God, God does everything possible. Listen to me instead of the book, okay? God does everything possible to get them back. So he searches and searches and searches and retrieves the lost soul, the lost person. And when that happens, when a person who has been lost is found, there's a party in heaven. The angels rejoice, God rejoices, the souls who are in heaven all rejoice. Um, and the more that we rejoice and have parties and celebrate things, the more like God we are, because God loves to celebrate. Jesus loved a good party. He, he did. Um, so let's pray. Jesus, thank you that when people get lost, you always look for them and find them. Help us to be good at celebrating when people are found. Amen. Okay, thank you guys. Hmm? It's a party. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The second scripture is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Listen for a word from the Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep, 
and losing one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one who is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The word of the Lord. Just a chapter ago, Jesus was eating in the home of a Pharisee where Luke says they watched him closely. Now Jesus appears to be at another meal with Pharisees and scribes, but the tax collectors and sinners are coming near. The word Pharisee is a derivation of a Hebrew word which means separate. It was right there in the name. It was a matter of pride and purpose to stay above the fray of the social outcasts and sinners to remain unstained by them. Imagine the anxiety of the Pharisees and scribes as the sinners and outcasts came near, and they grumbled. This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them, they said. Well, there must have been some of the more obvious types there, pimps, corrupt tax collectors, muggers, traffickers, swindlers, maybe with some of the more respectable looking sinners thrown in, computer hackers, con men, insider stock traders, politicians on the take. Whether the labels flung on them were fair or not, they were re recognized as sinners. Why was Jesus bothering with them, maybe even, they suspected, preferring their company over the company of the religious elite? So he told them two stories, three if you look further in the chapter, about something lost being found a sheep that has wandered so far that the shepherd has to leave 99 sheep behind to look for it, a sheep likely so frightened it hid in a gully and did nothing to help the shepherd find it, no bleeding, no running when called, a sheep that required finding, a sheep that did not answer the altar call during the first five verses of Just As I Am, but had to be tracked in the dark and cold and wet by a persistent shepherd and a lost coin, an inanimate object, surely unable to turn, up from, to turn from a sinful life, right? A coin that ended up in the wrong place and needs a diligent woman to search for it. It is not too much of a stretch to relate the shepherd and the woman with the coin to God, searching out the lost, those unable to help themselves be found. God ignoring all else until the object of God's love us humans, are found. To make that point more clear, Jesus says there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And also, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The coin and the sheep are solely dependent upon the finder, as are we to God. We do not initiate God's grace. But by grace, when we are found, we learn to turn from sinful ways. I love being Presbyterian. I think that the Constitution, which includes the Book of Confessions and the Book of Order, are full of theological jewels. They are about how we live together and what we believe and how we keep order. I'm looking forward to constitutional training, sharing all that is beautiful in them with our next class of elders. But it's easy to look at the Constitution of the PCUSA as just a lot of rules. It's easy to concentrate more on things like Robert's rules instead of the great ends of the church. It's easy to become pharisaical about it all. And it's easy to hoard the riches we have and to judge one another for partying with sinners. What if we run out of what we need because we didn't keep ourselves separate? What if Jesus loves the sinners more than us? 
Anxiety about being separate is a very human reaction. Wanting to follow all the rules correctly so that one stays safe is natural. But Jesus didn't have those anxieties. For one thing, he wasn't prone to sin. And for another, he was good at getting to the heart of why rules and law were there, as we saw when he was criticized for healing on the Sabbath. He lived more like a Pharisee than a sinner, but he didn't have any trouble finding common ground with anyone. He liked a good party. He rejoiced when the lost were found. The Pharisees had the anxiety that comes with the knowledge that our facades are just that. Underneath the showy righteousness is a sinner, just like the ones they are criticizing and avoiding. They are just as lost as the lost ones in the parables. They need Jesus. They need a good party where all of their pretenses are exposed, and they can simply be loved by Jesus, the host. What a party we had a few weeks ago when we welcomed in our new friends from Winsec. What a joy to see the fellowship hall full and to eat good food and have good conversation around the table. It was a sign of the kingdom of God that is here and always coming. And how joyous are our game nights, all sorts of people having wholesome fun and getting to know each other. This, too, is a sign of the kingdom. Jesus loves a good party, so come to the party. When new things come to shake us up and change the way we do things, let's welcome change as a reason to rejoice, and let's make sure no one is left out. Come to the party. Thanks be to God. Amen. sing this one with me one way one time through okay go ahead and announce it we're gonna sing hymn number 803 my shepherd will supply my need if you will oh, please rise in body or oh, spirit as we sing. Well, wait, wait, just wait a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's up. okay. Mark and I are going to go through it once, just oh, okay. the first verse, and then everybody rise. How okay. about that? All right. Okay. That's good. That, yep. Sorry about that, Linda. It's a new one, <laughs> but it's easy.
please remain standing as we say what we believe using the words from the Belhar Confession. We believe that the church must stand by people in any form of suffering and need, which implies, among other things, that the church must witness against and strive against any form of injustice, so that justice may roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. That the church, as the possession of God, must stand where the Lord stands, namely against injustice and with the wrong. That in following Christ, the church must witness against all the powerful and privileged who selfishly seek their own interests and thus control and harm others. You may be, please be seated. Now we turn our attention to our offerings. Time and again, God clears the path for us to seek the way of life, to do good, to become a refuge for the poor. That path lies before us. With joy, let us offer our gifts and our lives in trust. You can support the life and work of the New Hope, this church, by placing your tithes, offerings, and pledges in the collection place at the rear of the sanctuary. You may also mail them to the church office or give on our website. The QR code in your bulletin will take you right there. Let us now bless the offering. Holy One, receive these offerings as you receive our lives. Gather our false starts and uncertain efforts, our generosity and our reluctance. Enliven us with your breath and make your purposes known that our lives might show forth your glory. For we pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of your spirit. Amen. Let us please stand now for the doxology. Be seated, please. At this time, our online listeners will hear a hymn while we share together our joys and concerns, and we'll respond in prayer to each other with thanks be to God or Lord, hear our prayer.
spirit of life. In the beginning, you hovered over creation till you brood over the, still you brood over the world. We pray for the earth that mourns, for rivers smeared with waste and ground stripped and ravaged. Do not let us wait too long. Do not let us know disaster. Teach us who are foolish what it means to do good. We pray for your scattered children, for the people of Ukraine and other troubled but forgotten regions, for those lives that were lost on 9-11 21 years ago, whose heartbreak is old news and whose loss is relentless. We pray for all who cannot rest in safety, who must remain alert to signs of danger because their countries are riven by war, or because their homes are torn by violence, or because they have no shelter but the street. Help us to move with compassion toward those who are in need. We pray for neighbors who are troubled in mind or body or spirit, for mothers who face hard illness, for brothers haunted by anxious thoughts, for children who do not know whom they can trust. In the silence of this room, we lift the names and faces we know into the light of your love. Search them out, bring them home. God of holy love, of power and truth, help us neither to bow to fear nor to be silenced by chaos. Instead, move us, move us resolutely toward your world in need until we share the mercy we have discovered in your name. We thank you for each sign of your stirring, for the songs of children, the lingering sunlight, the knitting of shattered bones. You are present in each reminder of life's grace. Patient and persistent God, let that grace and mercy overflow from our lives that we might honor your name in the world. For we pray in the name of Jesus, who came to seek and save what was lost. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us in the words or language closest to your heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing our final hymn, number 547, Go, My Children, With My Blessing.
May the blessings of God, Parent, Son, and Holy Spirit be yours now and always. Be like Jesus. Enjoy a party. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>